Hey guys, welcome back to the Diet Doc Life Mastery Podcast. I'm Dr. Corey Probst here with Dr. Joe Klimzeski. Motivational mastery today, and we are discussing convenience. Hey Joe, we have a lot of clients who we work with who are working on making significant shifts in their lives toward what's important to them. And psychologically speaking, <laughs> convenience is a major factor. A lot of the choices that we're making uh, involve that aspect of motivation. You know? So you set the stage for why this is important and uh, kind of what, what you've seen among our clients in regards to convenience. Well, I think this is a topic that really covers a lot of the categories that we have laid out for the podcast. So uh, it is definitely one of my hobby horses, you know this, to talk about convenience in terms of business development. Mm -hmm. So in the scope of fitness entrepreneurship, if you don't understand that human beings make almost every decision, every initial decision based on convenience, what's the easiest thing for me to do right now, <laughs> then, then we really miss the boat. And so I want to I yeah. talk about that a little bit. But then, like you said, dive into our own personal psychology. And if we can just understand this, and you are, you are the true master at cognitive behavioral therapy in terms of getting us to realize the motivations of our own decisions. Mm -hmm. And then uh, by the time we get done, I think we're going to extend this into a couple parts uh, it's so important for our clients individually that I, I want to give some real examples of how to build convenience into their lives with, with okay. food, with fitness. Every single decision that goes into living a better, healthier life yeah. has to start with, is this convenient enough that mm -hmm. I will stick with it? Mm -hmm. Because if it's not, it's dead in the water. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's like the New Year's resolution. Those, those mm -hmm. people come in with great intent Mm -hmm. But the reason they often fail is because they didn't put down a bet on the color, you know, red or black, that, that right, is 100% right. based on convenience, and they did not factor that in. So I love this because I, I agree with you 100% that initially, and when we are just getting started on something that may be foreign or brand new or uncertain, that convenience needs to be there to a greater degree. Once we're in the process, I think is when you see that level of convenience decline a bit in terms of how much we actually need it in order to continue. And if we continue operating from a place of 100 convenient, 100% 100 convenience, then we're going to miss the bigger picture. Yeah. <laughs> and because the things that are most important to me are no longer necessarily convenient, but I'm right. going to do them anyway because I recognize that there's a greater level of value by stepping out of the convenience, but I probably never would have started in the first place if I didn't have some amount of it. And, and what's funny is I knew if I said, <laughs> you know, it's all based on convenience, yeah. you would just hammer me into submission on that point. So because I know you as a psychologist, I have to put all these little qualifiers in and make sure I know, you know, what your, your is going to be. Going to be. That's very inconvenient to be talking to me, Joe, because you're like, I have to put this disclaimer in there. Otherwise she's going to go off on this tangent. I, I, you're a, you're a <laughs> sneaky psychologist. And I just know, I, I know you're going to always have those little caveats and nuances that say, yes, Joe, but, and consider this. And then what about this? So I mean, I, I played you like a fiddle on that one. I, I knew what your reaction was going to be. But maybe the first time in my life, that's why I'm happy and gloating right now. Yeah. Um, but, but, you know, it's, it's so important, like I said, as a first decision point, because think even in retail, you know, the all important point of purchase displays, uh, things, you know, I, I started in retail. I mean, I don't, I don't, I think you know this, but I was a, a manager, a department manager at Walmart when I was in college, one of my many, many jobs. And, and I could take a product that was buried on a shelf, put it on an end cap or a stack base and go from selling zero units a month to a thousand units in a shift just because it's right there. We say, Oh, Hey, I need that as you're walking by. Right. 
Our brains work like that on virtually every initial impulse. Mm -hmm. So we go into the kitchen, hey, what's right in front of me? A bag of chips. Let me grab those because I can do that or I can stand at the stove for 30 minutes and make a meal. <laughs> you know, what am I going to do? My initial impulse is always going to pull me toward convenience. Yeah. And the so, convenient choice is often not the best or healthiest one. I mean, there's data. Not. Brian, uh, I think it's Wansink, the, the nutrition and diet researcher. You know, he has data out there that shows that people who keep convenience foods on the counter, cereal, chips, weigh on average 11 pounds heavier. Why? Because it's right there. You see it, you eat it. I've put things in the very back of the refrigerator. I've hidden them. I've forgotten they're in the back of the freezer. I, I have two, two examples, and, and I hope people will, will understand how biological this is. <laughs> it, it's just, it's part of our brain. I, I just posted something this morning uh, talking about how every second our brains are computing a million billion bits of information at a time. And, you know, for survival, we hear evolutionary biologists say everything is based on, you know, what, what is the least energy cons consuming yeah. process biologically, because that's what we'll keep through natural selection, everything else we discard. So here's what's really interesting, Corey. If you, if you help, held out your hand right now, like make a fist, okay. and you decide, okay, I'm going to extend just one finger, right? Okay. <laughs> your brain actually sent a signal to extend all five, but then a faster signal to inhibit the four that you didn't want to. Mm. Because evolutionarily, we started with just the ability to grip mm. and then extend. So instead of our nervous system recreating an entire new nervous system, it just lays down a new track on top of the old, new track on top of the old. It's a reason why even in um, uh, uh, a giraffe, the laryngeal nerve, because in other small mammals, the laryngeal nerve goes down around the subclavian artery and I think even the collarbone and then, then innervates it. Mm -hmm. In a giraffe, it goes down 15 feet to the <laughs> collarbone, then back up just because evolutionarily it costs less to do that than to reroute an entire new nerve through the, the brain. You know, one of the one of the cranial nerves. So anyway, all of that to say, it is so wired in us to shoot for convenience that to your point, Corey, it does take work. It takes effort. It takes intention yeah. to not make those easy decisions. So, so let's talk about that. Let's, okay. let's, let's go into the psychology of how, if we just know we're going to start with convenience, mm -hmm. how we can make that work for us for some things but then we have to just fight against it at other times because it's worthwhile. Yeah, let's go there. Do you have a story? Okay. Well, I was going to I was going to say, you know, interestingly, we're not the only ones talking about this because in just the last few years, venture capitalists have spent almost 10 billion dollars on what they call the on-demand category. So everybody's looking. I mean, look what happened with Uber. Yeah. Look what happened with Uber. So we start with Uber, then we've got Uber Eats, then we have Uber dog walking, then we have Uber babysitting, then we have anything we can do so I don't have to leave my chair yeah. is the goal of venture capitalists today because they know human beings more than anything want convenience. The path so, of least resistance. And like I said, biologically, socially, psychologically, all of those forces are in us, and yet you and I both know sometimes the best things in life actually take the longest. They take the most effort. They, they are very counter to those initial impulses. Well, yeah, and I hear you saying this, Joe, and I'm kind of, I'm doing a mental inventory of everything that I do on a daily basis, and most of it is not convenient. However... I do use, <laughs> but this is a very simple example. I use um, dry shampoo. Why? So I don't have to dry my. I don't have to wash my hair. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> or 
we, we, we do that for our dog, actually, in between <laughs> baths. So I, I get it. Tr Tracy is making the same decision. I'm not going to give the dog a freaking bath. Right. But so when I think of the things, though, that are really consequential in my life, my fitness, my health, my relationship, I'm not doing the easy, it's not the, the easy, convenient stuff. Um, there's a reflection involved and I'm thinking about the ride that I did this weekend and it was like a ton of hills, hills, a lot of resistance and discomfort. And all I'm thinking of as, as I'm riding is this is making me stronger. This is making me stronger. I'm getting stronger. I'm getting stronger. Um, but so there were two things work, working, literal work going on at the same time, the physical work. And then there was the mental work of positioning my mind in this, I'm getting stronger, I'm getting stronger, as opposed to not conveniently going to, this sucks, I'm going to stop along the side of the road and walk. <laughs> Well, you know, and that is one of my favorite metaphors of all time because it, it really relates to what, you know, we do with our business. And that is that if you want to get stronger, if you want to gain muscle, if you want muscle tissue to change, what does it take? It takes actual resistance. Yeah. It, it takes going against the, the easy path. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, but I do think something we talked about in the past we do have to pick and choose what is really important to us. If I'm going to choose a path that requires work and effort and resilience, then I probably need to make other parts of my life so convenient yeah. that I can focus on those important, you know, one off projects that I really need to pay attention to. So part of, part of this uh, little mini series we're going to do, you know, I, I do want to talk about how to create those conveniences. Like you just said, with your kitchen counter, what does your kitchen look like? You know, what kind of food do you have in your office? You know, all of those things. I want to give real tangible advice. So we're, we're going to even maybe pull some people out there and see what they do. Mm -hmm. um, but then I also want to spend a little time talking about, you know what, sometimes you just have to suck it up and do the hard stuff. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's just when you really want to do something important, there's, there's no other way around that. You know, so on that note, Joe, I'll just say that I, there are some instances that where some people might say, well, that takes a lot more, more work. I, I kind of flip that around and go to, but it, it, I, I, I'm going to botch this, like, there's this weird sort of it's this and it's that at the same time it's a lot easier to experience the resistance and the pain initially so that once you're engaged in it it's not there anymore is that making sense mm -hmm. okay right so it's what i'll say is the resistance is temporary mm -hmm. and absolutely when we're in the middle of the suck <laughs> or the discomfort our brains also have this natural tendency to say, this is never going to end. So just don't go there. It's too painful. Exactly. Great point. Yeah. So the, uh, we're going we're gonna to keep visiting that theme because anything that's that important to you does take some effort, but there are ways we can make that more convenient. So for the next two episodes, we're going to start breaking down things like your food prep, uh, how you create meal planning, mm -hmm. some of the hacks maybe that other people have that will, will really make this a, a very tangible experience. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to talk about even the fitness things, um, you know, in your training. So stay tuned for the next couple episodes and we're going to really exploit why people are spending tens of billions of dollars just to capitalize on your cheesy, cheap need for convenience. So uh, you, you need to be able to use that as a benefit for your own life, but also to resist it and say, wait a second, I'm not going to make those impulsive decisions because Corey's going to help me learn how to, how to make those hard choices easier. Awesome, Joe. Sounds like a fun series. Thank you. All right, guys. Thank you for watching and listening, and we'll catch you next time. Thanks, guys.